There was a man that was uh, down in Uli one time when I was down there ministering in Florida. And there was this man that come in, and he's a very giving kind of a character. And um, they were raising money yet to go to Chile. And this guy, when it came time to for people to put their tithes and offerings in, because the tithe is the 10% that goes to the church, and an offering is anything above and beyond that, and it can go any place. So this man goes up, and they have this big wash bin, this, you know, the old tin thing. So he comes up, and he has a pair of bib overalls on, and he's got red underwear, you know, the ones with the flap in the back. So he goes up, and he steps in, and he steps in. And so he makes this big introduction, and he takes out this wad of bills, and he throws it in the, in the big bend of, you know, for the money. And everybody's like, oh, wow. Wow, I wonder how much money that is. Wow. And I remember at dinner that day, people that helped me have helped me. Bill was one of them. Many, many hours I spent with Bill. And Bill said, well, he, re he received his reward. I'm like, huh? Sermon on the Mount. And so um, this morning I was kind of going through it and asking the Lord, you know, like what he wanted me to bring forth today. So I'm going to bring forth what he wants me to bring forth. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm excited. Made a way so that we could have relationship with God. I mean, the creator the one that is above everything, the one that knows everything, we get to have a relationship with him. We get to talk to him. We get to sing to him. We get to walk with him. And you know, one of the scriptures that God gave us for River of Life at our very first service in 2009 in this building was in Ezekiel chapter 36, where he said that this place would be like the Garden of Eden. What was the Garden of Eden created for? relationship that God put his two people in a place where they could walk in the cool of the day with God with God so in my mind when he gave us the scripture I realized that he said this is a place where this land that I'm giving you this building all of this is for me so that my people can come to know that they can walk with me that they can grow with me, that they can sing to me, yes. that the barriers have been removed and they get to be in my presence. And so that's what he's been doing over the years, teaching us all about his love, teaching us all about, you know, who he is and who we are in him. And, and we needed to understand who we are in him because so often we think that we we can't be with him because of the sins that we've committed in our lives that we have a hard time forgiving ourselves for, that we have a hard time letting go of, where God says, are you God? If I can forgive you, how can you not release that in completely? Why are you hanging on to that wound? Why are you hanging on to that bondage that's tormenting you at night? Or every time you see something, you have triggers going off, and you're just hanging on to something and giving the enemy power all over again in your life when I'm forgiven you. Why let him have that place? Yes. Don't let him have that place, yes. says the Lord. So this morning, we're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 6. And it's really funny because as you're going there, uh, all the Bibles are the same. Uh, somebody will holler out a page number. We're going to start in verse 5. But this morning in pre-service, we did something different. We, we got maybe... 10 minutes into 10, just after 10, and God had me just shut down the music and go to instrumental and for everyone in this room to press in. So we just had like probably a good 15, 20 minutes, everybody just praying in, in silence or softly, just praying for the service, praying for our community, praying for the things that need to be prayed for. And, and then... We sang prior to that about pouring out our oil and what that looks like. And, and so um, 
Kathy Bowling said that she was just led to, to pray the, the Lord's Prayer, and that's actually where we're going today. So I knew that God was like, I'm like, okay, just don't say no more because God's just giving me all this stuff. You know, I'm thinking in my head when she brought it up. So starting in verse 5, it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the streets, that they may be, sin be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. What does that mean? There was a man that was uh, down in Uly one time when I was down there ministering in Florida. And there was this man that come in, and he's a very giving kind of a character. And um, they were raising money yet to go to Chile. And this guy, when it came time to for people to put their tithes and offerings in, because the tithe is the 10% that goes to the church, and an offering is anything above and beyond that, and it can go any place. So this man goes up, and they have this big wash bin, this, you know, the old tin thing. So he comes up, and he has a pair of bib overalls on, and he's got red underwear, you know, the ones with the flap in the back. So he goes up, and he steps in, he steps in. And so he makes this big introduction and he takes out this wad of bills and he throws it in the, in the big bend of, you know, for the money. And everybody's like, oh, wow. Wow, I wonder how much money that is. Wow. And I remember at dinner that day, people that helped me have helped me. Bill was one of them. Many, many hours I spent with Bill. And Bill said, well, he, re he received his reward. I'm like, huh? You see, guys, he did that to have the eyes of men on him. That's why the, he dressed, he stepped in, he made this big speech, and then he pulled out this money, he just threw it out there. Can you imagine how much bigger that reward would have been coming from heaven? But what he did is he got his reward because he got the eyes of men. It's not that God didn't bless the money that he gave because he did. Because God led him to give it. It's just that he was weak in his flesh and he just, maybe he's insecure and he just needed to have everybody looking at him. And everybody looked at him and thought it was amazing. But, so in this passage it's saying when, when these Pharisees pray, they pray so that men will look at them like, look at those words, look at how they pray. And, and then what it does is it, imitate, it, 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 in, it intimidates other people like, I can't pray like that, I can't. Our prayer is conversation with God. Yeah. Our prayer is relationship. Our prayer is for others. You know, when you're praying for others, you pray one way. When you're praying just with God, it's another way because it's just you and him. But nonetheless, you're praying from the heart, releasing it unto heaven, not saying, boy, I hope somebody's watching and here's what I'm saying. Because if that's what you're going to do, that's what the hypocrites do, and that's their reward. But when you pray, go into a room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward openly. Amen. Amen. Do not use vain, repetitious as heathen do. For they, th they think that they will be heard for their many words. Guys, sometimes my words are like moanings and groanings and tears and laughter and praise talking and thanking him therefore do not be like them for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him in this man in this manner therefore pray our father in heaven hallowed 
be thy name. What's he saying? Lift up who he is. Hallowed be thy name. Father, you are Jehovah the Lord. Father, you are Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. You are God the Father, God the Son, and, and God the Spirit. You are Adonai. You are El Elyon, the God Most High. You are the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. You are holy, and I am coming before you. Amen. I pray that your kingdom come, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is your will, God? I don't know what your will is, but God, I want to know what your will is. So put it in my heart, put it in my mind. And Lord, for those that you know have need, bring your will to them. Help them accept what you're giving them. Help them grab a hold of what you're giving them versus what they want. Give us this day our daily bread. Now it's like, okay, God, you see the needs of my family. You see the needs of our community that you prayed today. You see the needs of the people that are going to be at River of Life today and in other churches. You see the need of my children and my grandchildren. God, you see the needs that we have. And, Lord, we're just looking to you to provide. We're looking to you, God. But we need the wisdom to know when and how and what. I met a young man last night, and he asked me a question. And he said, do you think it's okay? I've decided, I've lost my girlfriend, I've lost my job, and I'm just kind of hanging out. I don't go to church, but I read the Bible. He seemed very intellectual. And he said, do you think it's wrong for me to ask people for the things that I need, like gas money, because I need gas money, and, and I needed to pay my car insurance, and I'm sitting there, and all I could hear, hear was the Lord saying that we're supposed to work, and I said, and he's a young man, and I said, well, I can tell you what I'm hearing. I believe God wants us to work. The ones that are able to work, and, and you're, you're a young man, you are a provider. You know, you, I believe that you, you need to work, <laughs> not ask people to take care of your needs when, when you're capable. And I could see his eyes change and his demeanor change, but you know, it was truth that I needed to release to him because he was looking for truth, but he was hoping that I would agree and say it's okay. I said, now listen, there are programs and opportunities for people who are not able. There are, uh, there are things that, that are there that people actually have need, but when we, God has given us the ability to do, he'll provide. So it's not like, God, just give me my daily bread today and don't put your hand forth. He knows what we need. He's given me ability. He gave me ability throughout my life to do what I did in order to pay my bills and, and to give into the kingdom of heaven and do what I needed to do. But there's some people who can't. And those are the people that, that we help take care of. And they literally have needs. And, and it might not be their fault. But it's not a handout. It's a hand up. So we ask God to provide, and that's God wants us to ask, you know, for our daily bread, but don't ask for daily bread when he's given you something and said, here, you can go now. I, I've given you what you need for your daily bread. So this young man was saying, can I just ask people for what I need? No. There's nothing wrong with you. You're intelligent. You're 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 a young man. You're gonna have to provide someday for your and reading the Bible all day long for your studies. I knew in my heart that that was not 100% sincere. That was like, well, but I'm reading my Bible and I'm I'm doing all these things. Well. No, God, God will give us time to read his word. He, he wants us to pray that our daily bread 
would be met, but there's some things we have to do. Just like up here, we have to say, Lord, you're almighty, you're Adonai, we can trust you. You are Elohim. You know, there's a part always for us to play in everything. But it says, and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. Guys, have you been forgiving some debt? As a pastor... There was a wedding that I had performed, and the people, I told them they could pay me later because they usually pay you to do their weddings. And this couple that I had performed their ceremony for, which you're giving up a Friday and you're giving up a Saturday, and it's not about money. But what I did is I said, um, well, you know what, you can just pay me later. You can pay me afterwards because I knew that they were needing to have money. Well, they never paid me. And I would run into them and they worked at the hospital. And they would say, oh, because I would go visit people at the hospital. Hey, you know what, I haven't forgot about paying you. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever you get to it. And finally the Lord said to me, will you forgive their debts? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. What did it do? It released me from thinking about it. It released me when I see this person. I could care less. They don't owe me anything. When Dan and I give money, we don't let our family borrow money from us. If we're going to give somebody that is asking to borrow from us, we give it to them. If they pay us back or they feel they, they have a need to, then fine. But we are not going to go down that slippery slope of why didn't you pay me when you said that you would? I, that's a terrible thing to carry. So, you know, so, so, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors, right? So God, now he can forgive us in areas that we need to be forgiven for because we have forgiven others, right? A debt doesn't have to be money. A debt can be a lot of things. You might feel that you're entitled to have responses when you text or make phone calls and it doesn't happen. And now all of a sudden your relationship is strained because you felt disrespected and not cared about. That's a debt that you need to release somebody from so that you can love them correctly. A fight that you had, that's a debt. When you're still holding that person accountable and you won't talk to them for three days, because they haven't come and apologized, what you need to pray is that the Holy Spirit shows them what they have done so they can humble themselves before God. And if they can humble themselves before God, then they can come and humble themselves before you. But you don't need it anymore because you've released them in your heart. That's probably when it's going to come. Debts are more than money. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, the evil one. Do, and do not lead us into temptation. You know, God is the one that tells us to run from temptation, but yet we're asking him, do not lead us into temptation. Temptation will take you down a slippery slope because we all think we're strong enough. We think that we can do it. We think that... Oh, we can lead that person to the Lord. I can go hang out with them, you know, at a bonfire and not be tempted to, you know, do what I used to do or go into the bars and not do what I used to do. And uh, maybe for a very short period of time, but you better run because more than likely that flesh is going to start to rise up in the atmosphere that you put yourself in and you are going to end up going down that slippery slope. Especially if you go alone. God calls us together. Jesus even sent his disciples out by twos. Why do you think he did that? Accountability. To keep each other strong and accountable and eyes on Jesus. Not eyes on, that's why we ask for there to be two people to pray. So that people don't go into their their own selves that they really stay focused on the Lord and release the words of the Lord and leave them with the people.
Plus, it, it's also somebody else that can say, yeah, I remember what she prayed. She said this to you. Because a lot of times the person that prayed doesn't remember. So accountability is really important. And deliver us from the evil one. Guys, we can be delivered from the evil one. Amen. <laughs> this is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We can be delivered from the evil one. You are the one with the authority. Not because of you, but because of Jesus in you. And he's the one that has been given all authority, who then gives us authority, and we can be delivered. We do not have to take a bath with the devil. We do not have to do that. We do not have to sit there and let him beat us up and tell us how rotten we are and how awful we did. And do you remember when you did this? And how do you think that person's going to respond to you because you were this and that? No. You go to somebody who knows you, who will speak truth to you, but will love you and remind you that you are loved by God, called by God, set apart for such a time as this from God, and you can be delivered from the torment of the enemy. You do not have to sit in that. If we sit in that, we choose to sit in that because either we choose to sit in that because we are not, I want, I'm going to use the word ignorant because I can't think of a better word, but, um, you know, we're ignorant to the truth of the word of God, that we don't have to, that we can be delivered. I've been delivered from a lot of stuff by God, by God. He uses people, but it's his anointing that has broke the yoke. It's his word that has come in and transformed my mind. It is him. But I had to take time to sit with him, to talk to him, to pray to him, which is talking to him, reading his word, asking where to go, watching things that are good because your eyes are the lamp of this body. So if you're allowing a bunch of junk to go through your eyes, it is corrupting your body. It's the word. It's truth. We don't get any wiggle room. I'm careful. Dan will tell you. I go down at nighttime and I put chosen on. I know it's safe. I know that I usually learn something. That's me. I don't know what y'all do. I'm not your person that's over you. I just know for me, I don't want to be corrupted. I had a nightmare, horrible nightmare down in Kentucky. I don't have nightmares. It was the grossest thing I ever had in my life that I can remember. And the next day, when I seen Tammy, she said, how was your night? I said, I had the worst nightmare I've ever had. I'm thinking, what the heck? Where did it come from? I know where it came from. I told Tammy, I think I know where it came from. It came from, what's the name of that thing? Hunger Games. Hunger Games is not a good, I'm just saying. You don't watch stuff like that. My stepdad used to watch this stuff, and I'd be coming downstairs, and he'd pause. I mean, what are you watching? He goes, oh, somebody's having a baby. You know, and to be funny, but honestly, it's I, I had to be protected. I seen just parts of hun Hunger Games, and I got up and I went and started doing other things. But what I seen in my eyes, it went, and it corrupted me. Why? It's just because to me, why would you watch kids killing kids and mutilizing them and chopping them up? Why would you do that? So what do you think I dreamed about? Mutilation, flesh-eating people, pulling it off your cheeks. It was the grossest thing. So, But I had already asked God to forgive me for even engaging in that. Because I don't know about you guys, but if you walk in a room and you hear certain music, you're just drawn. You're like, what's that? i got a fear. That's just part of us. Flee from temptation. Walk away from it. Don't watch it. I went and started playing a game, you know, but it affected me because it went through the lamp of my body. And weeks and weeks and weeks later, I had a terrible, terrible nightmare. And then there was one other thing, too, that, that I had seen, which was on a Christian thing. 
I don't remember what it was anymore, but I'm like, and I think it's this other thing that I seen. Oh yeah, it was a testimony of some people being cannibalized in another country, missionaries. And you know, you, you think that's, that's all okay, but it could affect you. So, you know, you wanna pray over yourself. You wanna, Lord, deliver me from the evil one who wants to come and torment me. Because yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever, amen. I don't have to put up with all this stuff. But see, sometimes we just don't know. We, we fall into these ignorant places and these places and we just fall into these things. But guys, even though you fall into them, they get, they get their little hooks in you, you know, so you wanna go and pull them hooks out, pull them fiery flames out. 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. I just wanna to say to you today, if you are holding something against somebody and you think that you cannot get past it, you're right, you can't. But because of the blood of Jesus, through him you can. Amen. So forgive them. Because you need to be forgiven every day by your Heavenly Father. We all do. So if you cannot, do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive yours. And how did I get here? At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, this is just one thing that Jesus brought forth. But at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, I have to go there. Jesus has given us authority. And at the end, and I'm sorry, Tim, I don't have this. It's um, Matthew 7, verse 29. So throughout the whole time, if you go read the Sermon on the Mount at the end, it says, for he, capital H in the sentence, taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. So all these words in red, all these things, Jesus stood up there and he taught with authority because he had authority. And guys, he's given us authority. The crowns are authority that he gives us. That's why they get laid down at the foot of Jesus someday. But he taught with authority. So when you step into the things of God that he wants to do in and through you, you stand in authority of Jesus Christ if you are moving beyond his behalf. And going through the Lord's Prayer and understanding, even in your prayer time, to exalt him and lift him up and search your own heart and let him purge and let him pour in, you will walk differently with your Heavenly Father. Amen. Because he loves you so much. And sometimes you're just going to fall into circumstances you can't help, but when you leave, you can ask the Lord, please protect me from this or that, you know, and let him be your Heavenly Father. But when we knowingly and we put ourselves out there, you know, sometimes it takes a little longer to get past some of the things that we've done. Um, but listen, God does not put condemnation on us. Condemnation is part of that prayer, deliver us from the evil one. Because condemnation comes from the enemy, not from the Lord. Conviction comes from the Lord, who just keeps coming at you and telling you, you know, you can do better. You know, you can do better. I don't want you doing that anymore. You know what? You need to humble yourself and apologize. You need to humble yourself and apologize. You need to stop being critical. You need to stop being judgmental. Where with condemnation, it's like you never, you always, you're this, you're that, you're, and they're this. I mean, it's just the enemy. It is the one that Jesus Christ delivers us from, the evil one. 
So cover yourself with the armor of God. Cover your mind with the helmet of salvation. Cover your chest with the sh with the shield or excuse me with the breastplate of righteousness. Listen, we're made righteous not because we are but because he is. So you're covering yourself with him. You put that belt of truth and you tighten it up and you walk in truth and you answer the hard questions even though it's difficult sometimes. That was a hard question that that young man asked me. I don't have know him. You know, and but yet he remembered me from a, being a little boy and so, you know, you have to give that truth and, and peace. You can release that in peace. You know, Jesus is the, the peace person. He's the one, and you can release in peace. You know, you want to take that shield of faith, and you want to get behind it. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so it's important to take steps of faith, which is risk. But do what he's asking you to do, but stay behind that shield because the enemy will shoot fiery darts at you. And when it's time, you pull out the sword of the spirit and you use it for the kingdom of heaven not to beat people up. When it's released by the king of kings and the Lord of lords, there is something behind it and it's called anointing and power. And he will do the cutting between the soul and the spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you for who you are. I thank you, God, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I thank you, Father, that you tell us how to pray. And I thank you, Father God, that today I pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven with all these people, with all the people that are hearing my voice in Jesus' name. I thank you that you already know our needs, and Lord, we're just asking you to provide our daily bread today. And we ask that you forgive us. Father God, our debts as we forgive our debtors. So I pray, God, that if there's somebody that we're holding on against, that you would show us so that we can release people from being accountable to us. Just giving it, sowing it into the kingdom of heaven. Sowing it into the kingdom of heaven. Because the enemy only comes to rob, steal, and destroy. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Because yours is, it is the kingdom. Yours. The power and the glory forever yours. So thy kingdom, your power and your glory be magnified through your people. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.